your server from your normal username using Secure Shell. A few admin things. Uh, there are a number of servers running and normally servers keep a log of what happens. So let's look at a couple of logs. Uh, actually some basic things first. Clear just clears the screen so you can see it a bit nicer. How big is your hard disk? DF and in human friendly output DF minus H, H for human. The hard disk the device VDA1 is 20 gigabytes. Okay. Your VPS was allocated 20 gigabytes. You're currently using 1.7 gigabytes. Okay, so DF shows the, the file system information minus H in human friendly form. How much RAM do you have? Free. How much RAM or memory is free? Uh, I think minus M to show it in, it shows it in what? Kilobytes. Free minus M shows it in megabytes. And it's a bit confusing how much RAM is free. It depends upon how much is uh, in. Someone else is using my uh, terminal. Who is it? Okay. They resize theirs. I'll fix them. Start a new one. Okay, we're back. Thank you. The way that we're sharing the screen is that anyone could do anything on that one terminal. Okay. All right, let's go back. I'll log in again. The main number is this one. This is think of this as the amount of RAM you have free. It's the amount free if we subtract any buffers and add in the cache. So 350 meg free. The total memory was 490 meg. Alright, 512 megabytes. Okay, so we have about 500 meg in total. We have about 350 meg free. So unused. So we're not using much of the, the RAM at the moment. What else can we see? Ah, logs. Most logs are stored in the directory slash var slash log. CD slash var slash log. You can ls, there are many files there here. Go into the, the Apache 2 subdirectory, which is the log files for the website, the web server. CD Apache 2. Ah, permission denied. That's annoying. Um, all right, we should have set it up better. Sudo. Uh, see if this works. I'll do it again. Sudo, we need admin access to, to view the log. Sudo less Apache 2 slash access log, access dot log. Less just shows us the contents of the file, and the file is called access dot log, and it's in the Apache 2 directory. And this, it's hard to read, it's quite confusing, but it's one line for every time someone accessed our web server. It won't show up very well on my screen, on yours it'll be better. And it shows information about who accessed your website. Which IP address? Okay, the, 
the person who accessed it, the, the web browser, the date and time, the web page they requested, and something about their browser. Okay. So over time, as your logs build up, if you have a website, you can start to get statistics of who is accessing your website, how often, and, and do some analysis to, to understand the patterns of usage. Not very useful because our website has only been accessed three or four times. Uh, let me bring up my browser. Sorry. For example, after the log file or website has been used for a long time, the, the number of you can run some software that does analysis of the log file and gives statistics. So here's an example from a website, and it gets statistics like maybe hard to read purely from the log file, the number of unique visitors, number of visits, the pages visited, and so on. So different statistics over a period of a month. The totals over, over time, the amount of data was downloaded, how many gigabytes was downloaded from your web server, uh, the, the daily statistics, the hourly statistics, and where people came from, so the visitors to your website, where did they come from, and normally that can be determined because an IP address is often associated with a country, so you can work out when someone visited your website, where did they come from? Sometimes it doesn't work so well. And a number of other statistics like, can we find? When they search for your web, when they got to your website via a search page like Google or Bing or others, what query did they enter into that search website to get to your website? So some different queries or keywords that are shown here which come from the referral entry in, in the log. So that's basic analysis of the log gives you information of how that website is accessed. Once you create your own website on your VPS then you can set up the log analysis to get those statistics. One more log. Pseudo less auth log. When someone logs in to your system, they need to be authenticated. And this log keeps track of who logs in via secure shell and other, system, other ways. Pseudo less auth dot log. Press enter. Does it work? It shows many entries, some are not so Im important for us, but uh, if we log it, uh, this one, I know what I'm looking for here. This is a log entry saying that this server, someone connected via SSH to my server, and the, they use username Steve, the password was accepted, that is that Steve logged in and supplied a, a, an appropriate password and, and they logged in from this source address. Okay. So again, from this I can detect who logged into my computer, who logged into my server and keep track of what's happening. There are many other things here as well. This one becomes important if you run your server for a long time, especially a web server, this is where you'll start to see malicious people out on the internet starting to make thousands of attempts to log into your server 
you'll start to see uh, mm -hmm. literally thousands of entries saying login attempt at root failed. Someone tried to log in as the root user and they didn't supply the correct password. And there'll be many more attempts. And they won't just try the root user, they'll try some common usernames. Log in as MySQL, attempt failed. Log in as Drupal or WordPress, attempt failed. And many different common usernames will be attempted by malicious people. And in some cases, they'll be successful. And then they get logged into your machine, and then they can get access to uh, things that they shouldn't have access to. So once you run your server for, for real, and especially have a website, you need maybe some further security mechanisms to support, so to stop that from happening. But we will not cover them today. What else? What else do we say we'd do? I, uh, okay. Um, clear, let's go home. CD goes home. Top. Top shows you some statistics or some information about the processes running. Doesn't come up so well on my screen, it's not wide enough. Okay, but on yours you can make it bigger. And you'll see on the far right the, the processes or the commands running, the amount of CPU they're using, uh, and you'll see some summary statistics at the top, the amount of memory being used, uh, and, and so on. So you keep track of the status of the usage of your resources. Queue to quit. What else? Pseudo IP traff gives us some monitoring of the amount of traffic going in and out. Pseudo IP traff. Wow. Yours will has a bit better screen than mine. Uh, pseudo IP traff. I'll log into a different server. Bear with me for a moment. I think I have it. Try again. Why won't it work on mine? Okay, you get some welcome message. Anyone get that? Yep. Just quickly, let's go to detailed interface statistics. ETH0, or I think you, you may have ETH1 as well, choose ETH0. And it shows you packets going in and out. Why is it so slow? Yours you'll see numbers change. Mine is not for some reason. There we go. Mine's set up to run slowly. This shows you maybe the, most Im the easiest things to see, incoming outgoing rates. The amount of kilobits per second going into your VPS and coming out of it. Okay, so you can monitor the traffic uh, and see it change in real time over time. So when you run your server, you need to keep track of the, the usage of resources. Bandwidth, CPU, RAM, hard disk. X to exit. X to exit. And I'm going to stop there, I think. Any questions? Well, no, someone remind me of something else. Uh, I will not stop. What about copy files from your, comp your VPS to your computer? Okay. Let's create a file on my VPS. Currently, there's no files in my home directory. Let's create one. Uh, echo hello into my file dot txt doesn't matter what it is 
Okay, so I have a file on my VPS in my home directory and I want to download it. I want to copy it to my local computer. Different ways to do it. We'll do a simple way via the command line. So open a terminal on your local computer. So this is logged into your VPS. Now we want to copy it to your local computer. I will exit here. We can use secure copy, SCP. It's a bit long, but we'll get there. So from your computer, make sure you're not logged into your VPS in this terminal. SCP, secure copy, and it's source destination. The source is Steve at my VPS IP address, colon, then the full path I've given, slash home, slash Steve, Steve is my username, yours is different, slash my file name, space, dot. It's saying copy this file in this directory on this computer, logged in as this user and to the destination dot means to here to my current directory copy a file from our VPS down to your computer see if it works it's a, a long way to do it but uh, a basic approach okay easy secure copy is similar to copy CP but it's over a network connection and encrypted. On Ubuntu, you can do it a little bit nicer. Open up your file explorer on your computer. Uh, open your file explorer and from the menu you can connect to server so in your the, the file explorer from the menu connect to server and then work out the options to fill in Uh, specific the protocol uh, yes oh, sorry I haven't shown it yes that's a warning don't know I'll come back to it but I, I, I've seen it many times that warning but I don't think it's causing a problem when you connect a server it gives you a prompt to enter in some information server address what do we do I think it's SFTP the IP address of your VPS mine is this uh, so SFTP secure file transfer to your IP and connect then your username and password and connect I'll go back port choose the default port uh, sorry you've got an older version of the, the client so in your interface you just enter the server IP address and the type where it says public FTP, you select type of, select this, type secure shell, SSH, at the top. So yours are slightly different. Sorry. 
And now I have my file explorer that can f explore files on my VPS. And you can copy and paste, drag and drop, whatever. Try. So much, much nicer way to, to explore things rather than a command line. SSH, yeah. Username and password. It work? Oh, you can copy. Good. Mm, this one, SSH, and then your IP address, so your server. And then you can do whatever you like, drag and drop. You can even, I think, edit the files uh, and to, to copy and paste, move files and so on. So it integrates into the, your local computer. There are a few other things that uh, about synchronizing files from your server down to another computer, which are very useful. Uh, Rsync, uh, scheduling tasks. Maybe in the last five minutes, I want to finish before five. Schedule a task. Log into your VPS. Log in if you're not already. I think that's the wrong password. Sometimes we want to have a task that automatically runs, like every one hour, or every day, or every month, do something. So schedule some job to run. So in, in Unix and Linux-based systems, the software that does that is called Cron. Chronological, C R O N. Um, C D slash E T C. I think we may find one. Cron dot daily. So C D slash E T C slash Cron dot daily. In here are scripts which are run daily by the operating system. These green things are just text files which are bash scripts. And if you were here last week, we did very basic bash scripts which run commands. Uh, there's also a cron.monthly, a cron.hourly directory. Uh, and you can actually specify... You can add your own thing, scripts in here. If you want a daily... Uh, do something like copy files from one place to another, then you'd put that inside a script and put that script in this directory. And the operating system would execute it every day. But another way to do it, if we go back into the just the cron.d directory, there's cron daily, cron hourly, cron monthly, but there's also a general cron which you can specify exactly when you want to execute it. And let's just look at an example. PHP 5, this example script that executes on a regular basis. It's a bit confusing, but these numbers are the most important ones. The syntax is saying, if I remember, the first two numbers is execute this command, the following stuff, don't worry too much about what the command is. It does something regarding PHP. Execute this command at 9 minutes past the hour and at 39 minutes past the hour. Star means at any hour. 
any and the other stars I think any day and any month and maybe another one I forgot meaning effectively execute this 30 every 30 minutes at 109 139 209 239 and so on every day so we have some way to, to make a specification of the time when we want something to execute execute it as the user root what to execute this one let's create our own maybe easier pseudo nano and I'll call mine mine okay our last task for the day pseudo nano a file name password and let's get the syntax uh, I think this one will work five We may run out of time, but this is saying every one minute, every hour, so slash one mean is a special case for every one minute. Star means for which hour? Every hour. Any hour it means. Which day? Any day. Meaning every day. Every month. I always forget the last one. I don't think it's year. As root user, execute this command and whatever we want to put here. I put here run ls on home slash Steve and output the output of that command into some file. But unfortunately, we ran out of space on my screen, so I'll go to the end. ls is slip simpler one. Now, the problem with cron is we normally need to specify the exact path. That's where it gets confusing. So run ls on the root directory and take the output and put it into this file. The idea is that every one minute it will run that command and the output will be updated all the time on that, in that file. Save it. Control x. Yes. Let's hope it works. We need to restart cron, I don't think. Have a look. Look at the time, date, to see when it might be on the minute. Mm, didn't work. Didn't work. I don't think. Okay, let's do one last attempt. Uh, change slash one to fifty eight. If it doesn't work, then we'll give up. I'll show you my command uh, after I see if it works. It worked. I'll show you my command. I said. 58, no slash, 58 meaning at minute 58 on the hour. I chose that because I knew it was 357. At minute 58, as root, execute this command. 
don't use 58, now set yours to 59 if it didn't work. Uh, then if I look in my home directory, I see there's a file called ls.txt created at 358 and it will contain the output of that command. So in the first example I got the syntax wrong, it didn't work, but in this case it did. So we need to investigate further to get the, the perfect syntax. Ah, the star was missing, good. I should have hit star slash one, not just slash one, to do every minute. Basically you can schedule at any time to do particular things. To back up your file system to another server, to update your web page, uh, to, to restart something, um, to clear files. Anything that can be scheduled can be done with PROM. And at that time, it's a good time to finish. <laughs>